The year was 2021. After not paying his taxes, Turnip Boy had his greenhouse repossessed and took on Mayor Onion's dirty work to get it back. But Turnip Boy would not settle for this. Throughout his journey, he tore up every document he found related to taxes, wiping the concept from the planet. Angered by this, Mayor Onion powered up, becoming a god, only to be bested by Turnip Boy. After his death, war broke out, and in this panic, it's time to make a profit. Okay, okay, fine, it's the only one out yet. By the time this video is done, it's only gonna be like, February. I'm sure there are plenty of roguelikes that'll come out this year. Even if there's only one I really care about. Maybe I'm exaggerating. I mean, the game is still good. After starting up the game, I refuse to believe anyone played this in a window. I'm greeted by this weird creature with three eyes, most likely the cat from Tax Evasion. The cat's motives and purpose are unknown. All it really did in Tax Evasion was point you towards the collectibles for the true ending. I admit I have taste in that I'm not a bitch. I watched the intro cutscene and switched to full screen immediately. It's been two days since the death of Mayor Onion, and the Pickle Gang are getting me in on their plot to make some cash by robbing a bank owned by Stinky, a garlic boy. The gang includes the twins who work as weapon dealers, Raphael, one of Mayor Onion's minions who sells us enhancers like extra health and damage, and Annie, who's here for the higher budget on her research. She's mostly here for that research, but we can use her computer. After getting into the bank, we have three minutes to steal as much as possible and get out before the police arrive. The combat is mostly tripping to dodge while combining your melee weapons and guns to fight guards. You can also steal new weapons off enemies like this cactus, but unlike your normal weapons, these have limited ammo. But they will be reloaded if you take them out of the bank with you. There are two main ways to get money, stealing objects and shaking down passerbys. The bag caps your cash but not objects, so those are often the big earners at the end of a run. I met an artist doing a commission for Slay Queen 32 a streamer from the first game. She asked me to collect a payment since I have a connection with her. This is one of the first quests in the game. There are two main rooms to find here that we get to you using elevators. Vaults and offices. The vaults are guarded by blue lasers which we can't trip through, forcing us to move through the halls to turn them off. Now time to reap my reward- Damn it, I need a C4! Yeah, these bank doors can only be opened using C4s that you buy on the dark web, but we'll get back to that at the end of this run. The other areas are offices, filled with citizens to shake up. Aside from that, there are small vaults that we open using laser pointers we also buy off the dark web. You know, maybe we should have kept a better eye on that time. Once the police show up, they will constantly spawn in to add to the fight. At this point, the game encourages you to just get the hell out of there. After this goes on for a while, Sticky just fucking gasses the bank to flush you out. To be honest, I never found the timer that much of an issue. As long as I made sure to peek over every now and again, I was able to get at least most of the way out before they showed up. I honestly found it more helpful than anything when grinding for some quests. With my first heist done, I'm back at the base. This is where we'll be buying upgrades and guns. The twins let me recycle any guns I brought back from the bank for XP in order to unlock more weapons, besides the pistol and sword like this SMG. Raphael sells me those upgrades I mentioned earlier, and Annie gives me access to her computer to buy things from the dark web. The items here mostly unlock areas for progression. For example, this pick can be used to destroy these statues blocking the path, but this is the only time those statues are anything more than some loot. But I assure you, we will see plenty of items only for progression. I return to do some exploring. Slay Queen! Nice to see her again. I ask about the payment and... Oh. You stooped low, Slay Queen. I hope to never see you again. The bank was actually built on structures from the human times before the war. Annie wants me to take pictures of anything strange for documentation. I'm off. You know, I wonder what's here. I lost. At this point, I just loot for a few runs to buy some upgrades before eventually defeating Yeehaw, at which point I unlock level 1 access. Now it's time for all you Turnip Boy lore enthusiasts to get your fix. After the defeat of Mayor Onion, Veggieville broke out into a day-long war. Seeking refuge, the citizens of Veggieville set up a small community inside of the bank in an area that's now called the Seed Stock. Blueberry, Orange, Old Man Lemon, the gang's all here.
Okay, maybe it was cruel to send an old woman to hell, but she deserved it. I didn't buy that. Any, what were you doing? Divorce side quest, buy some items purely for progression, boss, fuck! Back to the lore. Stinky wasn't too happy with the townspeople staying in his bank, but to ease tensions held a festival. Until Candy Apple over here showed up and destroyed everything. After defeating him, I get level 2 access, but again, decide to get a few quests done. Such as getting access into a cult. Yeah, an entire religion has been made inside of this bank. It's been two days. Now I need you to understand a few things about the basic story here. Due to a virus, bombs were dropped trying to wipe out the infected. That virus is most comparable to zombies. The nukes polluted the land with radioactive chemicals mutating the plants, creating the food folk we know today. The god this cult worships is the blast from the nuke. But not only that, because of interaction with radiation and tax evasion, I'm glowing which this cult sees as a connection to God. Welcome to Dark Docks. Fitting name, it's dark as hell here. It's also filled with radioactive chemicals. They sure are just sitting there. If the darkness is just too much for you, you can still just buy a lantern to see more. To be honest, the hardest part of this area for me is just the light from enemies disappearing after their defeat. I just never got used to that. But the most important part of this area is that the items are starting to get worth a lot. We need to go deeper. Is that another turnip? Oh god no. These are the goblins. Ex-vegetarians hiding out in the bank. They're negotiating peace, but ultimately, they're just another group that we'll need to work for to get deeper in. Why is this the part where everything got absurd? Blah blah blah, Stinky's kid, blah blah blah, illegal substances, blah blah. Oh. Remember Cran Cran? Yeah, she's doing fine. This is getting hard to read. Not from cringe, but just because I don't know what words these are even meant to be. Good to know the old woman drawing anime girls now runs a fight club in hell. I had to lever the body pillow and learn these aren't goblins. They're just people cosplaying as goblins. I don't know how they're alive considering we've seen what happens when a human goes outside, but more importantly, this proves there are still people alive here, and likely all over the world, as these cosplayers probably aren't the only ones to survive. This is Mecha Chad, another one of May Runyon's henchmen. We picked up Raphael, Stinky got Chad. But if we wanted to proceed, we needed to feed him. This game uses goddamn slime ASMR videos as a mechanic. This is amazing. After defeating Raphael, I get level 3 access and... Still just deal with some other stuff first. What the fuck? 
Yeah, remember that one animal battle royale? That's here, I guess. It's not even that important, you just beat him and get a hat. It's not even canon, it's outright stated to be another dimension. The two games weren't even published by the same company. Area 3, the Cryptic Crypt. Filled with refugees that just couldn't fit in with everyone in seed stock. Pretty much all the enemies from the house show up, plus some newcomers. The areas are just getting more and more complex. This place is hard to navigate. Locker rooms. You have your own special locker here that you can stash guns in for later. It even shows up back at base. I 100% have to buy a bridge on the dark web. I find this fortune teller- What do you mean my dead sister is here? And she's haunting me over 20 bucks? I'll find her eventually. Yeah, money is starting to have no value. These prices are getting insane, and I was even able to get all the Roboroid upgrades before even finishing this area. There aren't even that many dark web items left to buy, and I had no trouble buying said items. I bought a bridge. Yeah, I'd like to, but I kinda have a lot of money right now, so... There's a window here and we get a peek at the world. The giant onion crashing into the planet did not treat it kindly. I found my sister. Cute. Okay, I'll fight it now. Uncle Rigsby, another human horribly mutated like Liz, who we actually can see floating around earlier in the area. A giant monstrosity that just wants to know what the hell is going on, and to get his coffee. He was eating a sandwich when the bombs dropped, and that led to this, somehow. Rigsby was actually the original owner of the bank. You can even find his portrait in this area as well as Dark Docks. I really didn't have any trouble with this boss. It's actually the only one I beat on my first try. But that's not Rigsby's fault. It's just that I had a strong, late-game super weapon that shoots out multiple bullets from one point that already kinda melts through bosses, and because Rigsby is stationary and has a larger hitbox than most bosses, he is especially fucked over. Think tax zone scraps and BTD6 but with guns and turnips. I actually thought this was meant to be more of a spectacle fight than a boss. No challenge, just question what you're looking at. I get a big-ass sword and level 4 access, taking me to the hallway at the beginning. We've searched every part of this bank, but now we're catching on. It's time to search underground. You're telling me nobody even considered the idea that maybe the bank owned by a billionaire with elevators going to countless floors, including separate dimensions, might have a basement. I buy a crowbar, break into the sewers, and now I have to fight through the rats to get to Stinky. I'm starting to understand why people buy bagged milk. Uh, You know, that kind of looks like the computer I edit videos on. I can't wait for the entire comment section to tell me this isn't a part of the game. Honestly, I'm mostly just mad I lost my guns. I push forward and reach the vault. After all this time, I've reached it. 
the mother load. But the greatest obstacle is before me, Old Man Lemon. He warns me, Stinky was involved with my father. I won't like what I find in there. But I've come too far. I can't quit now. Thank you, Lemon. I approach Stinky. He talks. My father, Old Man Lemon, and Stinky were in the Mafia. They ran the town. But my father grew soft. He had kids. Stinky didn't see him as worthy to be Don and had him killed in a plane crash. Dishonorably, with no fight. He shows me to a chest for proof. A revolver, a hat, and a picture. While I'm busy, Stinky runs off hiding. Dill and I are both pissed. We're not done with Stinky. We won't settle for the contents of the vault. We're stealing the entire bank. I buy some rockets off the dark web and now need to clear out the boss rooms to plant the rockets in. Remember that sunflower gun that made Rigsby a cakewalk? Use it. It can drop in his arena. Even if you don't get it during the fight, I'd argue it's worth it to run through the crypt rather than the docks for the chance of it dropping because it's that powerful. I plant the rockets in every arena and now it's time for liftoff. The bank is in space. I win. I'm bringing it to the moon and god damn it! Alien bastards. My fight with Mayor Onion in the first game got their attention, and now they're here to kill us. There's one option at this point. Stop the bank by turning off the thrusters and get the hell out of here. At no point in my life have I been under so much physical stress. The enemies don't even have a cartoonish death effect anymore, they just fade to dust. I successfully turn off all the thrusters and start the journey home. However, the aliens are already charging the death laser, and I have no way to combat it. Things are looking bad. The aliens are gone. The world is safe. Dill found a purpose. I won. At what cost? Well, we've really done it now, huh? I hope you've all enjoyed tuning in all these years. We've got one last song for you here at Snoozy Radio to go with you on this long road ahead. Anyone out there who makes it off this doomed little rock? This one's for you. It's called the Bandit. scanner and biological deposit box for fingernail clippings.